Uh, hi? You'll never believe what I just found in my basement. Wh what? It's quite possibly my most treasured possession of all. Wh what? No, I, I can't, I can't hear you. It's Toy Story 3, the video game. This is perfection. Toy Story 3 The Video Game, a game where you get to live inside of the movie and experience the entire story firsthand. Okay, actually, there's not much correlation between the movie and this game, but that does not make this game bad by any means. In fact, lots of people love this game. Some people love it so much that they spend days, weeks, months, even years trying to see how fast the game can truly be beaten. Toy Story 3 The Video Game received many mixed reviews since its release in 2010. It was available on four different platforms, the Wii, PC, Xbox 360, and on the PS3. Both the Wii and the PC versions seemed like they were more or less in the beta stage in development despite being released, but the Xbox and PS3 versions seemed like totally different games. They had enhanced graphics, more cutscenes, more collectibles. However, that did make these versions of the game slower in multiple ways. All four different platforms that supported the game took different times to beat. The Wii was the slowest by far due to the heavy lag. The PS3 and Xbox version took similar amounts of time to beat, but neither of them were the fastest due to the added cutscenes and the slower loading times. This made the PC version of the game the fastest by far. In this video, I will focus on the most popular version and category of the game, Story Mode Any% percent on the PC version. The Story Mode consists of 8 different levels. The player must complete them all in order and defeat the final boss at the end to finish the game. But how would players find the fastest way to complete this game? Who would lead the charge in the journey to defy the limits of Toy Story 3? To answer that, we must travel back in time to the game's humble beginnings. For the first couple years since it was created, there wasn't much in the way of speedrunning activity in Toy Story 3 the video game. But in late 2012, a speedrunner named Passive bob now known as Nixie, completed his first Toy Story 3 speedrun on stream. Unfortunately, it's extremely hard to actually watch the video of this run. Streaming back in 2012 was very... different back in those days, but that did not stop Nixie. Starting off 2013 strong, he beat his PB by over 12 minutes, achieving a 1 hour and 13 minute time. Let's take a look. The run starts with a chase between Woody, Bullseye, and Porkchop, and you have to avoid falling rocks while dodging obstacles. After completing this, Nixie begins the train section. He breaks one of the children free from the cage by throwing a tennis ball at the target. He then dashes along the train car, avoiding obstacles, and launches himself at Porkchop. After some careful platforming, Nixie approaches the last train car and gets the final hit on Porkchop, completing the first level. The second level takes place in Andy's room. All three characters, Woody, Jesse, and Buzz, are playable in this level. Each one has unique abilities. Woody can swing himself up to hard to reach places using his voice box, Jesse can jump onto tiny platforms, and Buzz can throw both Woody and Jesse. To progress through the level, you need to collect the phone on top of the bookshelf. Nixie uses Jesse to move the nearby laundry basket so that he can jump off and perform a jump on top of a dart. He then collects the phone from the top of the bookshelf. The gang needs to get to the phone that's located in the middle of the basement, but it's too high for them to reach. Thankfully, the paratroopers have come to the rescue. They can be thrown onto the platform using their parachutes. After Nixie uses Woody to get the first paratrooper, he uses Buzz and throws Jesse closer to one of the other paratroopers. Next up is Buzz's video game level. 
the longest level in the game by far. It starts with a two minute auto scroller, which leads to a section where Nixie has to dodge incoming meteors until he reaches the big boy. This giant meteor destroys everything around Buzz, leaving just a few platforms to spare. Nixie carefully navigates himself throughout the platforming section and ends up getting launched right on top of Zerg's fortress. This is one of the hardest levels to complete, both from a casual and speedrunning standpoint. Nixie struggles throughout some of the tighter areas in Zerg's fortress, and ends up using a safer strategy at the end to make the falling platform section easier. When you die four times before the falling platforms, the game gives you a helping hand by making a few of selected platforms unable to sink, making it much easier to progress forward. After defeating the robots in the next room, Nixie enters the Zerg boss, where he needs to use his laser to defeat Zerg. Nixie does a pretty fast three-phase fight on Zerg, staying ahead of his PB by well over a minute. The fourth level takes place in Sunnyside Daycare, where Nixie has to complete three separate minigames to progress to the next level. The Bullseye minigame, where you need to pop all of the balloons scattered throughout the stage. The Toy Car minigame, where you need to knock down all of the blocks scattered throughout the stage. And the Alley Throw minigame, where you need to hit at least 47 aliens before intentionally striking out. The next level takes place in Bonnie's house, specifically in Bonnie's imagination. Nixie must travel across household items as the witch progressively fills the room with more and more coffee. As Nixie gets farther into the level, the coffee rises with him. And of course, this is the perfect transition into finding a rocket ship just outside of the kitchen window. Nixie's next task is to power the top of the rocket ship by finding three small batteries. Nixie must travel across some rails and collect each battery one by one. After collecting all of the necessary batteries, a door opens that reveals a rail that Nixie can ride all the way down to the bottom of the ship. After a two minute ride to the bottom, Nixie must power the bottom of the ship by finding three bigger batteries and putting them into their respective capsules. Once that is completed, a platform is revealed which takes Nixie to the end of the level. Now we move on to Prison Break. In this level, Nixie uses Jesse and Woody to save Rex Slinky and Ham escape their confinement. Nixie has Jesse free Rex since she is the only one who can climb the platforms, and Nixie uses Woody's voice box string to swing himself up and save Slinky. He switches back to Jesse to free Ham, finishing the level around six and a half minutes ahead of his PB. The junkyard level starts with the task and pressure of keeping the aliens from falling victim to the saw blades behind them. Then. All three characters, Woody, Jesse, and Buzz, need to work together to save Rex, Slinky, and Ham. Because once wasn't enough! Nixie carefully maneuvers each character so that they can progress and destroy the entire junkyard one machine at a time. They all need to make it to the end of the level to open the chute that allows Buzz to throw a box into the garbage machine, destroying it and completing the level. Now arguably the worst part of the game. The final boss. The goal at first is to destroy all the muffins, then you must destroy the witches that spawn in five different phases of the fight. In phase one, you must shoot four of the witches that spawn twice. You destroy the flying witches by using a space cannon. In phase two, Nixie must use a cow launcher. Yes, I'm serious. You launch cows at the big witch that spawns. Phase three is identical to phase one, except with five witches, and phase four is the same as phase two. In the final phase, both the big witch and the tiny witches are flying around at the same time and you must destroy either the big witch or all of the tiny witches in order to finish the game. What makes this boss horrendous is that almost everything is completely reliant on RNG. The muffin and the tiny witch placements are all completely random, and you can lose time if a witch lags over your shot. And, of course, you can get screwed over by all of the muffins. If you happen to die during one of the phases, you have to restart that phase all over again. Amazingly, Nixie had a decent boss and ended his run over 12 and a half minutes ahead of his previous PB. Alright. Alright, let's go 
downstairs. She's got a bed. Just a few days later, Nixie got another promising run. He got close to one minute ahead of his PB outside of Andy's room. His buzz's level was phenomenal, coming out over three minutes ahead. He gained more time in Sunnyside, but lost some of it in Bonnie's house. He was able to gain some of it back and even more in Junkyard, but a death in the boss made him bleed even more time. He was able to keep his head on straight throughout the end, and managed to get the first ever sub 1 hour and 10 minute time. He implemented a new skip in Prison Break that would influence the level for the rest of history. He managed to get past the locked gate by aligning himself on the fourth beam and dashing along the gate until he managed to clip through, skipping the half a minute long cutscene. With this achievement, Nixie had opened the door for others to change the game, but as history would have it, this would be Nixie's last run in the Toy Story 3 grind, forever cementing himself as the true grandfather of Toy Story 3 the video game. The following year, in October 2014, a player by the name Ignite took his time down to a 104. In his run, he used the gate skip just like Nixie did. Most levels were improved just based on skill alone, with no new tricks discovered. This run was pretty impressive compared to Nixie's. There was just one problem. This run was not the world record. Rewinding back to November of 2013, there was a different player that was on the horizon. A player who went by the name The Vost submitted his one and only speedrun to the leaderboards. Vost had actually shown interest in the game way back in 2012 when he made a forum post about the game. Needless to say, this run was long in the making, but it wasn't just any ordinary run. It was the first sub one hour time in Toy Story 3 history. 10 minutes faster than Nixie's run. What? 10 minutes shaved off? How? There was a big change in the timing system. No way. Way. No way. Way. Nixie's start time began on the moment that he selected the first level, but Vost instead opted to start time the second that he loaded into the level. Timing from then on would always start on the first frame that you loaded in to the first level. One of the optimizations Vost made was in Andy's room. Instead of pushing the laundry basket all the way to the right side of the shelf as Jesse, Vost just nudged it to the left side of the bookshelf as Woody, and used Woody's voice box to swing up to the phone. But one of his biggest optimizations over for Nixie was by using only Jesse in the garage room, instead of using all three characters. In the Buzz's video game level, he had fewer deaths and saved over two and a half minutes over Nixie in the level. He stayed about even with Nixie throughout the Bullseye and Toy Car minigame in Sunnyside. He saved a couple of minutes over Nixie in the first section of Bonnie's house, only suffering two deaths. After a very fast rocket ship, he was well over 5 minutes ahead of Nixie's record. Even though Voss didn't do the gate skip, he makes better use of both Woody and Jesse in Prison Break, giving him an incredible 8 minute lead over Nixie going into Junkyard. He managed to stay on par with Nixie throughout Junkyard, and after getting faster patterns and faster phases on the witch fight, he finished with an incredible 58 minute and 22 second time. An astonishing improvement upon Nixie's record. While Voss only submitted this one run, it is undoubtable that his impact on the community was tremendous, one that would forever be remembered and treasured. Even though runners had discovered all of these optimizations throughout the run, the game saw little to no activity for the next three years. But then came the revival. How did this game get revived? I mean, clearly no one actually cares about this game, right? I mean, how does a game called Toy Story 3 the video game get revived? Well, I'm glad you asked. There was a player out there who was destined to change everything that we thought that we knew about Toy Story 3 the video game. 
Very rarely do we ever get to see a story about someone persevering through the thick and thin despite there being seemingly no reason to continue. Everybody, let me introduce you... Capri Dog. Capri Dog started seriously running Toy Story 3 in the summer of 2016 and was dead set on beating Vost's run. It was then that Capri Dog uploaded his first run, a 54 minute and 34 second time, beating Voss's run by just under 4 minutes. How was he able to do it? Let's break it down. It's worth mentioning that Capri Dog was using an Xbox controller, while both Nixie and Vost were using keyboards. The limitations that using a keyboard presented in runs was very evident when comparing an Xbox controller to the keyboard. In both Nixie's and Voss's run, you can see just how jarring their movements are when they move around, compared to Capri Dog's more smooth movement because of the 360 degrees that he has to use with the joystick. Another crucial difference to add was getting rid of the toy box cutscene. In previous runs, players were forced to go into the toy box mode briefly after completing the first level, which took about 30 seconds to do. What was the solution? If you load into the first level and exit, your cursor is no longer locked onto the level. From there, you can go to the toy box mode, watch the cutscene, and then exit. Now when you complete the first level in a run, you are no longer forced into the toy box mode. This gave Capri a 30 second edge over the Vost. When it came to new strategies, Capri implemented a tight ledge grab jump. In normal gameplay, you would have to interact with the child and deliver him to Buzz, which triggers a box to fall so that Woody can progress forward. But that took too long, so instead, Capri did a precise double jump off of the last box near the ledge, giving him just enough height to make it up. Leading up to the last throw, Vost actually had a death because he got too close to Porkchop in his run. Capri played his cards more carefully and stayed a whole car away from Porkchop. He did a precise jump and threw the tennis ball way at the target, just barely hitting it before he fell off the train car. At this point, he was already ahead by 40 seconds. Even though he did have a couple of hiccups during the platforming section of Buzz's, he managed to get ahead by using a new Zerg boss strat. Voss defeated Zerg by hitting him once every single time that he came back up and shown his vulnerability. Capri, on the other hand, had a big brain strat up his sleeve. Capri zapped Zerg longer than normal in the first phase, which allowed him to get two full hits on Zerg. This let him complete the boss in just two phases, earning 20 seconds over Vost. Capri saved 10 seconds in the Bullseye and Toy Car minigame in Sunnyside. He also avoided the Vost mistake in the first half of Bonnie's by having zero deaths and getting the fast sponge cycle on his first try. Capri also cleaned up Vost's deaths in Rocket Ship, but lost some time on the very last battery. In Prison Break, Capri used the gate clip at the beginning, saving another half a minute over Vost. After being just about even with Vost's junkyard split, Capri used a strat in the second and fourth phase of the final boss, which allowed him to hit the witch multiple times even when she was in small form. Finishing the run just under 4 minutes ahead of Vost, Capri Dog had officially made a name for himself in the Toy Story 3 speedrun community. So you think he'd be done for a while, maybe take some time to celebrate getting a world record in one of his childhood games. But no, Capri was different. He wasn't one to settle for an okay time. He wanted to destroy the competition and revolutionize the way the game would be viewed for the rest of time. No matter how many tries it took, Capri Dog would never give up. This was the beginning of his ultimate domination.
Capri was absolutely dominating, and it seemed as though there would only be gradual improvements from here on out. Tighter movements here and there, maybe cleaning up a couple of desks there and here, surely there will be no more major strategies discovered. But around mid-2017, Capri roped in one of his friends. His name was Pinto. Pinto was never as interested as Capri in speedrunning the game, but he was interested in discovering new things about the game. Both of these intrepid explorers were on an ultimate quest, one that could save minutes off of the run. The level that they had their eye on the most was the second half of Bonnie's, the rocket ship. They wanted to save at least 10 to 20 seconds by skipping some of the platforms and some of the rails, and if they got really lucky, maybe even skip an entire battery. But they didn't find any of those things. Instead, they found a glitch that would become the most legendary tale in Toy Story 3. Something beyond either of their wildest imaginations. The start of Toy Story 3's true legacy. I present to you... Infinite Wall Jumps. It turned out that the holy grail for this game was right under everyone's noses the entire time. When Pengto tried to wall jump, he paused during the animation and discovered that he had officially broken the game. The glitch was simple. In normal wall jumps, you are locked into a direction that is opposite of the wall that you just wall jumped off for about one second. This makes it impossible to jump upward normally. However, with infinite wall jumps, this gets completely tossed out of the rocket ship. I, I mean the window. To perform it, you need to do a normal wall jump, and while you're in the fixed directional state, you pause the game. Before unpausing, you have to move your joystick in the direction that you wish to go. Then, when you unpause, you will switch to whatever direction your joystick was facing before you descend. The best part about this trick is that it was not frame perfect, which quickly made it very viable in runs. I wish it was viable in real life though. The first major implementation of this is in Capri's first sub 50 minute run. He swings up to the helicopters and skips the slow sponge section, but that's not even the best part. In the rocket ship section, he performs infinite wall jumps to skip getting all three of the small batteries. He didn't even need to go inside of the ship. infinite wall jumped toward the rail that led to the bottom of the rocket ship. This shaved off nearly 5 minutes off of the level, one of the biggest time saves ever discovered. This strat made Sub-50 a breeze, forever opening the door to all of the future possibilities the game had to offer.
Predog managed to get his time down to a 43-14, and it was the first run to feature the new Zerg boss strat where he defeated him in just one phase, saving an additional 20 seconds. That same day, Capri lowered his time again by over a minute and a half down to a 4140, which didn't even have the one phase Zerg boss. One of Capri's noteworthy time saves was in the final boss, specifically in the final phase. Most runners would try to destroy most of the tiny witches before going to destroy the big witch, but Capri went straight to destroying the big witch. This means that the tiny witches have a chance of getting in the way of Capri's shots. As Capri Dog continued to run the game, he realized that there was a goal that he was starting to reach. The sub 40 minute barrier was right around the corner. All that he needed to do was to implement all of the skips that he had found and combine them all into one magical run. The very next day, Capri lowered his time again by 17 seconds. It was clear that Capri had become more and more comfortable using riskier strategies, even though they might have only saved a minimal amount of time. Capri was finally mastering the art of infinite wall jumps, and it really started to show throughout his gameplay. A couple days later, he blasted through the train level and got the one phase Zerg boss. Combined with a decent sunny side, rail glitch, and prison break, that put him one minute ahead of his personal best. If he played Junkyard just right, a sub 40 minute time was just within reach. All that he needed to do was get a good boss, and sub 40 was his. But even with more risky boss strats, Capri still felt just short of reaching his goal. If the Tiny Witch hadn't blocked his last shot, he would have gotten a perfect last phase. His final time was 40 minutes and 23 seconds, less than half a minute away from breaking the sub 40 minute barrier. Even though Capri didn't give up, this would be his last record in the year of 2017. Well, gosh diggity darn, if there's no more runs submitted in 2017, how could the record possibly be beaten? Ever heard of 2018? The year of 2018 had come around, as well as new stories to tell. Capri Dog had been playing Toy Story 3 thousands of times, but successfully executing all of the tricks was proving to be a lot easier said than done. However, this did not deter him. And then, this happened. I did it! I did it! I did it! I did it! Oh my god. His dream had come true, the first sub 40 minute run in Toy Story 3 history. His epic buzzes level was what helped him break the minute barrier. He finished it over 40 seconds ahead of his PB split, and miraculously kept that lead all the way up until the final hit on the boss. A 39-43. After this run, Capri still played the game, but started taking it a little less seriously for the next few months. And who could blame him? He single-handedly carried the game's legacy on his shoulders for over two years now. He was the true king of Toy Story 3. But four months later, with no competition in sight once again, Capri started running the game once more to see if he could push it even lower. It wasn't long before he beat his record again, this time by 11 seconds. Despite the minor improvement, there were two new strategies that were introduced in this run. The first one took place in Buzz's video game level. The end of the platforming section forces the player to ground pound five platforms in order to get launched on top of Zerg's fortress by a... Geyser? Yeah, that took way too long. 
Instead, Capri dashed along the side and jumped off the platform and landed out of bounds, specifically on the thin line between the invisible wall and out of bounds. And this is Toy Story 3 we're talking about here, so of course you can infinite wall jump off of the invisible wall. Capri wall jumps off the wall until he makes it over the top, falling into the loading zone of Zerg's fortress, which saves about 10 to 20 seconds. The second strategy was also a bit out of this world. At the beginning of Junkyard, Capri Dog didn't use Buzz at all and instead used Jesse to destroy the fire machine and used Woody to wall jump on top of the invisible platform and then jump onto what is normally Buzz's section. Woody drags the boxes over to the crushers and destroys them just like Buzz would do, and then he dashes off the edge. What the? After a 20 second fall to his death, all three of the character's checkpoints get reset farther into the level, which saves 40 seconds. Oh! Capri went from 20 seconds behind going into Junkyard to 20 seconds ahead leaving Junkyard. The speedrun community knew that Toy Story 3 still had a lot of slow sections. The level that stuck out like a sore thumb was Sunnyside. Upon entry, you are forced to listen to Lotso talk to you for over a minute before being able to actually play the level. Mashing the A button during the loading screen would sometimes skip some of the dialogue, but it was never consistent. Now in honor of your arrival, we're throwing a new toys welcome carnival. You also had to talk to each of the toys that introduced the minigames before being able to play them, which cost about 10 seconds each. Sounds like a fun level. But then, the community decided to allow something that they had never considered before. Changing the language settings. Different language settings had different effects on gameplay, but the French version in particular spoke out to the runners. Choosing the French language setting, you would no longer have to listen to Lotso's dialogue because there were no French voice actors that recorded his lines for the game. The same applied to the other toys that introduced the minigames. This saved a minute in Sunnyside alone. The French version also actually saved time during the final boss. In the English version, you have to wait for Bonnie and Andy's dialogue to finish before the cow launcher appears. In the French version, once again, there was no dialogue. This saved another 15 seconds. So, in May of 2018, you can only guess just how far the record came down. Capri stepped back from the game for about a year, and when he returned, he pulled off this. Capri's perseverance was unreal. From his first submission, he had shaved his time down by a whopping 18 minutes. In his recent PB, he also brought back the platform skip, which he hadn't used since his 4327. We'll come back to that later. In September of 2019, Capri broke through the 36 minute barrier and managed to score a low 35 minute time. He was squeezing every last drop that he could out of this run. Over the next couple of months, he improved his time first by 5 seconds, and then by 2 seconds a couple weeks following that PB. Surely by now, the limits of the game had been pushed as far as they possibly could. <laughs> when will this end?! Capri Dog did it again breaking yet another minute barrier with a 3430. He had found even more improvements, like hitting crystals from a farther distance, finding more ideal routes for the Bullseye and Toy Car minigames, and using only Woody instead of Jesse during Prison Break. 
Shockingly, there was actually a different face behind a few of the discoveries that were made. This runner's name was Infinite. Infinite discovered that you can wall jump right below the red button and grab onto the platform from underneath instead of climbing around. But you can see in the run that Capri doesn't actually push the red button, which means that there is still an electrical obstacle that blocks Jesse from progressing. To counteract this, Infinite discovered that you can wall jump off of another invisible wall and gain just enough height to clip into Buzz's area. From there, he can jump back down to Jessie's area past the electrical obstacle so that she can still deactivate the fire machine. All of this just to save a 5 second cutscene. Infinite also invented a new route for the toy car mini game that took a similar amount of time as Capri's older route, but the jury is still out as to which is actually faster. By the end of 2019, Capri had finished the game in a very solid amount of time. Alas, 2020 seemed to be destined to have no new records for Toy Story 3. June came and went, July, and then August, and these were months where records were typically set. But then, when the world needed him most, he came. There you go. Armed with a new live split setup, Capri beat his time by 12 seconds. He took high risk low reward strategies to a whole new level. He got a gold on train, nailed the platform skip, and was spot on on the rail glitch. He could have gotten a better time if the boss actually cooperated with him, but it seemed like the phase one patterns had different plans for him. Oh, damn it. That wasn't good. Fast forward to 2021, there wasn't much activity going on in Toy Story 3 at this time. Then, in March of 2021, Daniel introduced me to Toy Story 3 the video game for the first time. After I watched Capri's latest world record, I decided to analyze the run to see if I could find any more time saves. Daniel had the Wii version of Toy Story 3, so he and I started exploring the game together. We spent days hunting for potential skips in any of the levels, particularly in Bonnie's house. In April, me and Daniel were playing Toy Story 3 together in the living room when my little brother stumbled in. We were just trying to infinite wall jump around the rocket ship to see if we could fall any farther and skip any other portion of the level. That's when my little brother made a suggestion. Why don't you guys try wall jumping up to the top of the rocket ship? And so we did. <laughs> oh, nice. You just clipped through the whole ship. I just clipped through the whole ship. Oh, oh my god! god! Oh my god! By total accident, Daniel had discovered a way to clip through literally the entire ship. It took us a while to figure out how to recreate it, but we eventually pieced everything together. Just before performing the clip, Daniel had to activate the witch cutscene on the rail. Afterwards, he takes an intentional death, infinite wall jumps back up to the invisible ramp, and falls through the entire ship. Activating the cutscene was the key to make this trick work. Before the cutscene is activated, the death plane is just below the player, but after the cutscene is activated, the death plane moves way down, almost below the entire ship. This trick ended up being well over 10 seconds faster than the rail glitch, and much easier at that. Later that year, I found a better route for the garage portion of Andy's room. Until then, the optimal play was to throw the paratroopers in a counterclockwise order as Jesse. But if you perform the quick wall jumps and infinite wall jumps, going clockwise is actually faster, as long as you use Woody. It saved about 5 seconds in the level. I mean, it's nothing like what Daniel found, but hey, I'll take what I can get. Over the next few days after I posted my findings, it sparked some interest in the game again from some of the members. Among those members was Capri Dog. And then, the first record of 2021 was set. The run featured the new Andy's Room route, 
one of the best buzzes levels ever, and an outstanding prison break. Taking into account the randomness of the boss, it wasn't that bad this time around. He almost completed it in less than three minutes. An outstanding run, performed by Infinite. Infinite had been on Capri's tail for a long time now, and his efforts had finally paid off. For the first time in half a decade, Capri Dog was no longer on top. This was a legendary day for everybody in the community, including Infinite and Capri Dog. Everybody in the community started to feel a different air inside of the server. For the first time in five years, no, the first time ever in Toy Story 3 history, there was speedrunning competition. In late 2012 to early 2013, there was Nixie. In late 2013, there was Vost. And from 2016 until 2021, there was Capri Dog. None of them ever had a single competitor. But finally, Infinite and Capri Dog were both neck and neck in this race to push the time lower. Both of these players had tremendous experience with this game, as well as a long-lasting bond with one another, and they were both ready to take down the time as far as it possibly could. It's time for the ultimate showdown. Capri discovered one of the hardest skips in the entire game. Remember the platform skip from earlier? Normally players would need to wall jump all the way up to the backpack in order to spawn the platforms visually, but instead of going all the way up there, Capri just jumped off of the fridge and aligned himself perfectly toward the invisible hitboxes of the platforms. All of the platforms are aligned exactly the same as before, but they're all invisible. On the very same day Infinite set his record, Capri Dog quickly reclaimed the title and set the very first 33 minute time. Infinite got a run that was 9 seconds behind going into Bonnie's house. He had no choice, he had to go for the invisible platform strat. He climbed up, higher, and higher, and... He made it. Infinite just needed to get a good boss to get a new record. So what did he do? He got a near-perfect boss. The first sub 3 minute boss ever performed in a run. Infinite blew past all expectations. The potential for this game to get pushed lower was more real than ever before with all of the new strategies that were discovered. Later that night, Capri started up his stream again. Infinite tuned in, and so did I. We started chatting about how much the game had been brought down in recent weeks. And... I don't think any of us were prepared for what was going to happen that night.
don't think 32 is going to be be easy to do. I honestly don't think it's going to happen. I might have a chance, but I don't think so. I do. We do know that low 33 is that low 33 is is possible, but I don't know. <laughs>
I went there, stayed, stayed the night. It was a fun time. And then that next morning, I had a super sunburnt face, I remember, because we didn't put on sunscreen at all. <laughs> I don't know why we didn't. We went to the pool. And my face was so red, like it was peeling. Don't ask me why they didn't offer sunscreen. <laughs> so I went back and went through the front door of the house. And my friend was staying on the couch. He was basically just... He was he obviously had stayed the night, and I did not expect it because I haven't seen him in probably like three or four years, so it was kind of it was an unexpected thing. I was wondering why he was here, and I found out because somebody was trying to break into his house when his parents were away, and my dad apparently went over there and tried to save him. He was obviously too scared to stay there overnight, so my dad offered for him to come over here yeah, the next morning. We were just hanging out in my room that I'm right that I'm in right now. This is where my computer is and everything. At the time, the record was it was a forty six thirty five. I was telling him that I was I. He knew I did speed runs, but it wasn't like to this extent of Toy Story. Like I was showing him the early Bonnie's room route, like back in the day. It was really really cool, and we used the helicopters to get up to the top. It was really really fun. So yeah, we. Then he had a girl call him. I was like, you know what, I'm just going to do runs. I don't know what happened, but I was like in full focus mode. Like, I didn't take my eyes off the screen for this run. I kept going, playing that and doing that run. Because that run was, uh, was insane at the time. And we were actually going to go see the new Spider-Man movie that day. Run was good. We got to the end. Got to the end of Ponda Bakery. And we were about to leave. Like, 20 seconds. I finished the run. 10 seconds before, before we had to go. 10 seconds before we were going to be late. <laughs> it was extremely nerve-wracking because I was on world record pace and we had to go. So I was hurrying and rushing to the end of the game. And it happened. 43-27 happened. And that was my favorite run of all time. So, I guess the moral of the story is... Toy Story can bring friendships back together. Because you have a friend in me.